I was this close to making the R5C my main camera. Ditch everything else that we have, buy two more of these and just use this as our main camera. If it wasn't for two things. What are those two things and everything else about this camera in my full R5C review. My name is Eamon Cooper and welcome to Market Pixels. This camera review is a little bit different than all the other camera reviews that I've done on this channel because all the other camera reviews that I've done, I actually used this camera as my main camera for a while. But if I just stated, I didn't use the R5C as my main cam and I only used it as a BTS cam, as an underwater cam, as a specialty cam, as a vlog cam. We used it in all kinds of scenarios, but I never really used it as our main shooting cam for several commercial jobs. I still think that I have a good enough feeling of this camera and I was really surprised about this cam. And again, I was really close to ditching everything else, but more on that later. Before I start getting into everything that I like and I don't like and all the ins and outs and what I think is amazing about this camera, let's start talking about the body and the design as we always do on this channel. Well, it is a mirrorless camera from Canon and it's basically the R5 with a fan slapped to the back of it. And I actually do like the design because now it's a little bit beefier, but it's not too beefy. It's not as big as a Canon C70, for example. And I really do like the design. I also like the button layout because it's redesigned for video first. And that is something that I really appreciate about this camera because I'm a filmmaker first. I still shoot stills from time to time, but my priority and the priority of our business is definitely filmmaking. So here here having a camera that is a hybrid and does both but is video focused is absolutely amazing. I love the button layouts and that you have so many custom buttons to make it your own and this is something that's really important to me and I always customize all my buttons and settings for quick run and gun shoots so that I know where everything is and I can quickly change everything on location. And if you're interested in all of my settings and all of my custom button layouts then make sure to subscribe right now because this is a video that I will put out in the very in your future as well. I still think I'm missing one or two buttons. For example, I haven't really found a way to actually get a button for peaking and other little things that I do have on my Canon C300 Mark III or my Canon C70. So I think there's like one or two buttons missing for me, but overall I still really like the handling and the button layout of the camera. I am missing one thing on this body though, and this is physical audio controls, because now that we have the cinema camera menu, which is meant for a cinema camera and all the other cinema cameras from Canon actually have physical audio controls, we are missing something and it's really hard to change audio levels or make any adjustments to the audio well within this camera, either in the software or on the body itself. If you're using a Rode Video NTG like we do for this camera that has its own gain meter, it's not that big of a deal, but I would wish for us to have some other way to actually access and change menus. And with this new menu and no physical audio controls, this is actually pretty hard. One thing I obviously do not understand and I don't like at all is that this camera still has a micro HDMI port instead of a mini HDMI or a full size HDMI. I'm good with it not having SDI because the Canon C70 doesn't have SDI either, but please give us something bigger than a micro HDMI port because I can't tell you how often I actually broke micro HDMI ports. And we use this camera in all kinds of variations. We use it in an underwater housing and unfortunately it doesn't perfectly fit our underwater housing as the R5 did because now the tripod mount holder on the bottom is a little bit towards the back. So for our underwater housing, it doesn't fit 100%. It still worked, but it's not as perfect as the R5, for example. So if you have an underwater housing or some other housing that is meant for an R5, Keep in mind that the tripod mount is not on the same place as it is on the R5. When we're using it as BTS cam, where we shoot photos as well as video, then we basically don't rig it out and we just use it as a small camera and take advantage of its small footprint. We don't use external battery solutions or external monitor solutions. Maybe we have a microphone on top, but that's pretty much it. Overall, considering it's a mirrorless camera, I really do like the design and I don't really have anything to add to it. And well, that's pretty much all we need to talk about the body in my opinion. 
We now have two separate menus. When we are in stills mode, we have the full capabilities of all the other Canon stills cameras, and this is actually pretty cool. But now when we switch over to the video mode, we have the full capabilities of any other cinema camera by Canon, like the C70, the C300, or the C500 Mark II. And I am for one, I'm all here for it. Having used Canon DSLRs, mirrorless cameras, as well as cinema cameras for the longest time, I really like having the option of both menus and you don't have to have any sacrifices when it comes to shooting video on a stills camera anymore. There is a slight delay when switching over from the stills mode to the video mode. I think it's about seven or even nine seconds, which for some is a problem. For me, it really doesn't matter at all because we hardly ever have to switch from stills to video quickly because again, you also have to dismantle or deactivate the ND filter when you're doing so because I would never shoot video without an ND filter unless I'm shooting an event. So this might only be a problem if you're a concert photographer as well as filmmaker and you need to quickly switch between the two i guess for the work that we're doing this is absolutely no problem at all whatsoever having worked with canon cinema cameras for the longest time i do love that we now have the full capabilities even on our mirrorless body here and this is something that i really appreciate and i think it's a great move by canon especially having exposure controls yes you can find workarounds when using an r5 for example if you have an external monitor and the external monitor has its own exposure tools but oftentimes you can't use them for example we have a big job that now is going on for over a year and last year we shot a lot with the r5 underwater in an underwater housing and here we were basically filming blind because you can't use any exposure tools because the camera just doesn't have any you can use a histogram which isn't really accurate and a lot of the times we were just shooting blindly with the r5c however you can display waveforms or even have access to false color directly on the internal screen and that when shooting underwater in an underwater housing came in so handy. So these little things just make this camera so much more enjoyable and actually usable for us on a lot of shoots opposed to an actual mirrorless camera like the R5 that is just mainly used for stills photography. So having this option and having the menu is an amazing step forward. Having the same menu on all of our cameras also makes it so much easier to just seamlessly integrate this camera into our workflow with the C300 Mark III or our two C70s when we have a multicam shoot and we just want to match exposure and match settings of all of our cameras. It's so much more convenient if you just have the same menu on all of our cameras. Another great thing about having the cinema camera menus now is the different options and flavors and codecs. And this is one thing that always bugged me about the R5. Those files were huge. You couldn't really edit them on all of the computers, especially not Intel computers. With the new M1s, it's absolutely no problem. But now we have all kinds of different flavors from MP4, HEVC, but we also have XFAVC, we have Longop, we have the bigger versions, so we have no constraints. And this is great for us because that was always a big problem because sometimes we did a vlog about a commercial shoot and we actually shot twice as much footage when it comes to the data rates on the R5 just for our own vlog than we actually did for our commercial client. And now having the smaller file sizes and the different kind of codecs and flavors makes it so much easier to actually integrate this into our professional workflow. Another thing that's also cool is that we don't have the HQ mode anymore. And that means that everything is downsampled from 8K, even when shooting at higher frame rates in 50 or 60 frames. So before you always had to switch to the HQ mode when shooting in 24 or 25 frames to get the downsampled version. But then when you went up to 50 or 60 frames in the R5, you had line skipping. Now we don't have that anymore and everything is downsampled from 8K if you shoot in 4K up to, I think, 60 frames. I'm not sure if 100 and 120 frames is also downsampled from 8K. Well, but it does look good anyway. One thing I can't really say too much about is how well these edit on older computers, because as of right now in the office, we only have the new M1 Max computers and everything edits flawlessly except for the 8k raw even the 8k mp4 gives us no problems on all of the 16 inch macbook pros that we have in the office and the smaller file sizes may be the long gob xfabc or the mp4 absolutely added like butter again i can't really say anything about the older computers because we don't have any anymore but when it comes to the overall flavor of all the codecs so far everything looks really nice and smooth 
When it comes to 8K RAW, even on the 16 inch MacBook Pros, you can edit it in Final Cut in better performance. It does drop frames here and there. You can really do it in full quality, but again, it's 8K RAW. So I don't think that's too big of an issue because I think if you're shooting 8K RAW, you might want to just use proxies. And if you're wondering what codec we use most of the times, it depends. We either use the MP4, which is the smallest codec that you have on the HEVC side, or we're using the XFAVC long gob and we mostly shoot 4K for basically everything. And again, I will do a full video on why we use which codec and what settings we use. So again, make sure to be subscribed for this video in the future. So now let's address the little elephant in the room and that is the autofocus because I personally made a video that the autofocus on the R5C is not the same as it is on the R5 when in video mode. And yes, you can tell that it is definitely better than on the Canon C70 because there were rumors out there that the autofocus now that we have the same menu as on the Canon C70, that it is just as good as the C70, which is obviously not true because we do have eye autofocus. And honestly, we tested both side by side a lot. We haven't really been able to go to the absolute challenging situations that we had issues before with the Canon C70, like filming a figure skater on ice with a lot of contrast and maybe even backlit situations. And there I can't really draw a comparison, but when comparing it to the C70, they're pretty similar. Again, we do have eye autofocus, but we used it on an event the other day side by side, and you could definitely tell that the autofocus of the Canon R5C is much better than the one on the Canon C70 because we had a speaker on stage and the R5C found the person's eye immediately, even though we were really far away, whereas the Canon C70 had problems finding the face at all. So I for one am the first to admit that I was wrong and the autofocus is definitely much, much better than on the Canon C70 and it's definitely not the same. If it is exactly the same as it is on the R5 in video mode, I'm not 100% sure, but I think it would be pretty similar. At least I hope it is. And overall, again, autofocus is definitely better than on the Canon C70. Granted, I only use autofocus when I can pull focus manually easily, and that is on a gimbal or in an underwater housing. And here having a camera that is even more reliable than the C70 when shooting underwater where you basically can't control anything and you don't really see a lot, is also really great to have the R5C for these special kind of situations. Image quality. This is another thing that people talk about a lot and this is also something where I might have been a little bit prejudiced in the beginning because I have used the original R5 alongside my C70 and C300 Mark III for the longest time and it was always quite hard to integrate it into a full production shoot with these two cameras because you could clearly tell that the R5 had less dynamic range, it was way punchier and you also felt it was a little bit digital. But now with the R5C, although it is the same sensor, the image just looks different and it looks way closer to the C70 and the C300 Mark III. I don't know how they did it, but I do feel like we have a lot more dynamic range on the R5C sensor than on the original R5. So much so that when using both cameras, the C70 and the R5C next to each other, you can hardly tell a difference. Yes, there are differences in the image, but it's really pixel peeping. And if you only use one of the two cameras, I think both are totally fine. And the whole dynamic range and better image quality factor isn't necessarily that big of a factor anymore. The differences that I can tell is that yes, the C70 has a bit of a flatter image to it when it comes to C Log 2 because you don't have C Log 2 on the R5C. So if you're more into that kind of vintage flat look that you can grate punchy if you want to, then the C70 might be a little bit on the favorite side for you. Whereas the R5C is still a bit punchy. I mean, you can still grate it away and you can try to desaturate it. But overall, I found the R5C again a little bit too sharp sometimes because that's the next thing it is way sharper it is down sampled from 8k so you do get a really crisp and nice and sharp image whereas the c70 especially with the speed booster is a little bit on the softer side me personally i like that we shoot with mist filters about 95 percent of the times because i like that filmic soft organic look if you will whereas the r5c is sometimes a little bit too sharp for my taste Another thing that I found when comparing both cameras side by side and shooting the same situation with the Canon C70 and the R5C is that the skin tones were slightly different and just out of camera with a slight grade, I have to say that I do prefer the skin tones of the Canon C70. 
Again, this is when you have both cameras side by side. Whereas when you only use the R5C, nobody will tell, oh, look at the skin tones. They're not as amazing as on other cameras. But if you have them side by side, I felt like they were a little yellowish and a little pale compared to the C70. So I did prefer the skin tones on the C70, but with a little bit more grading, I bet you can just make them match. One thing I did find though, is that I felt the R5C didn't handle the highlights as well as the Canon C70 did in extreme situations where you had a lot of reflective surfaces and you were shooting out in bright sunlight, especially in water, for example. So when we were using the Canon R5C in an underwater housing, I did find that it clipped the highlights here and there where the Canon C70 didn't. But again, I didn't really have that much time to set my exposure correctly in some of these situations. So maybe if I would have underexposed a little and then brought the shadows back up, that wouldn't have been an issue. To finish off the image quality section, I think at this point it's really personal preference. We shot with both cameras on the same location. And if you do like this high contrast, really a lot of detail, sharp image that is coming out of the R5C, then great. Me personally, I preferred the Canon C70 in most situations because it was a little more flat and softer and nicer looking on skin tones. But again, at this point, it's basically up to you. So now let's talk about one of the most important things for me, and that is the workflow. Because again, all these modern cameras have great images and they're all good enough for all of your client work. But when it comes down to shooting a lot with different kind of cameras, running and gunning, and having all these versatile jobs that we do, because we shoot from high class commercials to run and gun documentaries in Mexico or in the United States, to having events and everything in between. We need a camera that can do everything and it can do everything well. And here is the number one thing that bothers me about the Canon R5C. And that is the one thing that also makes me not want to use it as my main camera. And that is the missing internal ND filters. Yes, there are ND filter solutions out there, but I wasn't hundred percent satisfied with any of them. There are great ones like the Mikey drop-in filter. There's also one from Canon. There's a full review on my channel. You can check it out right here. I actually prefer the Mikey over the Canon ones and it's great, but it's not ideal either. It does have some shortcomings. For example, you can't use RF lenses with it, which is a big shortcoming, but it's also really handy if you use it in a water housing, at least the one that we use, because you wouldn't really be able to use a ND filter that is screw on the front because we're using a big dome for it. So having this drop in and defilter option is actually amazing. But overall, I found myself not being able to do 100% what I want to with this camera because of the internal ND filters. When running and gunning and having internal ND filters, it's so much value to be able to just press a button and dial in your exposure. And you don't have to worry about ND filters. You don't have to worry about color casts like you have with a lot of matte boxes. You don't have to worry about some vignetting and some cross polarization with a lot of ND filters out there. And this is such a major turn off for me when using the Canon R5C is that it doesn't have internal ND filters. And here again, it depends on what you're shooting. If you're only shooting interview kind of setups, you're doing corporate videos, then you have a lot of time to use a solid ND filter or just dial in your ND filter to the setup that you're using. But again, we're shooting so many different things. And in this, I found that I oftentimes sit there and see like, okay, what kind of setup do I need for this? Because now I want to shoot an anamorphic lens with an RF mount and I can't use the drop in filter now. And it's always somewhat of a hassle to find an ND filter solution that has no color cast that works in all kinds of situations that is fast to operate. I don't have to tell you anymore, not having internal ND filters for me, is a major letdown. Other than the issue with the internal ND filters when it comes to the overall workflow, the R5C is everything that the R5 wasn't. We now have time code, so we can use it alongside all of our other cinema cameras on big interview setups at the third or even a fourth angle, and we can easily synchronize them. This was something that always bothered me about the original R5. Another thing that I also were missing were all the file sizes, because they were way too huge and they were really hard to handle, especially if you shoot for someone else. And that is what we just did. We had a job in Switzerland where we had a multi-camera setup, but we weren't shooting and editing. We were only shooting. So we had to deliver all of these files to a client to do post-production. With the R5, that would have been a pain because we had to deliver some highly compressed files that they might not have been able to even edit. Now we can use a standard XFAVC codec, give it to them, and we also have metadata included, and we have no issues of delivering these to an off-client editor. 
Another thing that always bothered me about the R5 was the overheating. We couldn't really use it on long interview setups. We also had a record limit of 30 minutes. And even when shooting in an underwater housing, the camera constantly overheated. And that was actually a problem because sometimes we had to just stop the shoot and tell the client, okay, we have to wait now until our camera functions anymore because it is overheating. With the R5C, I was a little bit worried that would be the same thing because I thought that the fan on the back side was the only thing that prevented it from overheating and that fan wouldn't work in an underwater housing. But luckily for us, we shot in really bright sunlight where it was really hot outside, underwater all day, no issues with the R5C, it never overheated on us. Another really big thing for me when it comes to a workflow with a camera is color grading. And what I love about the Canon C300 Mark III and the Canon C70, we shoot everything in C-Log2 and you do have dedicated C-Log2 to Rec 709 LUTs on the Canon website. And those work perfectly with the C70 and the C300 Mark III. You also have C-Log3 to Rec. 709 LUTs, but I always found that they were a little bit too punchy because what I think is that they are made for the C70 and the Canon C300 Mark III, which still has a bit more dynamic range even when shooting in C-Log3 than on the Canon R5C. So when using this conversion LUT, it was always a little bit too punchy. So a lot of the times I found myself grading everything from scratch to get a little bit more more dynamic range out of. And speaking of color grading, all the shots that you see here are graded with our custom LUTs specifically made for Canon cameras. We also have some for Sony and Blackmagic, but when we shoot on our Canon cameras, we use our own custom LUTs for basically everything. And if you want to check them out, then you can get a 10% discount with our code R5C. Check out the link in the description below. So this isn't a major issue because most of the times I'm actually using the conversion LUT from Canon and it works fairly well for most of our shoots. Sometimes where I feel it's a bit too punchy and I need to match it to the Canon C70, then I do grade it from scratch before I throw our own custom LUTs on top of it. But again, not a major issue. Another thing when it comes to workflow with the Canon R5C and that is something that I really appreciate is its overall versatility because we do have the RF mount on a full frame sensor. We can put it in Super 35 mode if you wanted to use our cine lenses, our cine zooms that are specifically made for Super 35, but we can also use an adapter like the internal ND filter adapter or just one with a control ring and then use any of our EF lenses. So we have the full versatility when it comes to lens choices, which I don't have on the Canon C70 or the Canon C300 Mark III. If you want to shoot full frame RF lenses, for example, then it just doesn't work with the Canon C70. We are using the speed booster about 95% of the times, and that works well with basically all of our EF lenses, but it doesn't work with all of the EF lenses. So it's always a little bit of a hassle of which lenses you can actually use on the Canon C70 if you want to use full frame and you don't have that problem with the R5C. So that was one of the major factors why I was thinking of taking the R5C and making it my main camera, because there are some anamorphic budget lenses out there with an RF mount, even tailored to full frame, that don't exist for the EF mount, or even if they do exist for the EF mount, they don't work with a speed booster. So this is always a bit of a headache when choosing lenses for the cameras you have, and with the R5C, I wouldn't have that problem but I do have the problem with the internal ND filter. And when using these special lenses, the ND filter problem becomes even more apparent. So that was the thing where I was like, nah, I can't do it. I'll just stick to my Canon C70s. But now let's talk about the second thing that I hate about the Canon R5C and also doesn't want to make me use it more. And that is the battery life. So this is an issue that everybody complains about it's a battery life. And yes, it is as bad. So when I first started using the R5C, I wanted to record a YouTube video and I wanted to use the R5C as my camera to record myself. And the way I usually do it is I put it on a tripod, I set everything up, I set my lights, I set, you know, the uh, audios, but I have the camera running to be able to adjust it and, you know, like be able to adjust myself. And I started with about 45 minutes of record time, which really isn't a lot in the first place. And the camera wasn't even recording. It was just sitting on the tripod. Once I was done and sitting down to actually record the YouTube video, I was down to about 30 minutes. So it's great to not have the camera overheat anymore. It's great to not have the camera have a recording limit anymore. But if I only have 30 minutes of battery life, then this doesn't do anything for me. And it's not necessarily about actually running out of battery all the time. It's more about the anxiety of 
being able to run out of battery because you shoot something like an event and then you sit there and you just see this battery counter draining and compared to the Canon C70 for example which has absolutely amazing battery life where you don't really have to worry about anything like that it's a major letdown and this is something that when wanting to use the camera with the internal battery it's an absolute no-go. That also became an issue when using the camera in an underwater housing, which is quite tricky and takes a long time to actually, you know, get the camera out of the housing to change the battery. And again, about 30 to 40 minutes isn't that long. You always quickly have to turn off the camera to save on battery life, which is also annoying. And that's something we're also not used to, especially when shooting documentary work, whereas I want to have my camera running the entire day. So if something happens, I just quickly have to press the record button something i can't do with the r5c with the internal battery either there is of course workarounds where you can just plug it into the wall with a regular laptop charger and then record for indefinite time or you can use a v-mount battery or a power source other than the internal battery which is also a little bit tricky when rigging out and again there's a full video you can check out on my channel about this but that also kind of limits the hybrid capabilities because if I have a big bulky battery attached to it, which I do like for filmmaking because it makes the whole rig a little bit bigger and easier to handle, I'm losing my capabilities of taking pictures. And that's why I'm wondering why I'm even using a stills camera in the first place and not go to a full cinema camera. All of this is also true for using the camera on a gimbal. And I think the R5C is an amazing gimbal camera because it's small, it's lightweight, and it has amazing autofocus but the battery issue makes it really unpleasant to use. There is options where you can power the camera externally even when using a gimbal, but everything gets a little bit more annoying and a little bit heavier and a little bit more complicated. Whereas when using the Canon C70, which is now our dedicated gimbal camera with the internal battery, it just runs for hours and hours on end and you don't have to worry about that at all. There are several rumors out there that this might be improved via a software update like the overheating on the original R5 because when the camera is completely depleted with its battery life in video mode, you switch it over to photo mode, you still have two bars left. So the camera actually works. When talking to a Canon rep, they told me that it is the fan and the fan takes up so much battery life. I'm not sure if this is 100% accurate and there might be a little bit more improvement, especially with the fan controls. Because again, when using the camera on a tripod without recording anything, I don't think that I use the fan too much so overall there might be some improvements coming via a firmware update later but i wouldn't hold my breath for it one thing i also like when it comes to the overall workflow is that it shoots time lapses internally on a lot of our jobs we shoot hyperlapses we shoot time lapses and i always need a dedicated stills camera for this because the canon c70 and the canon c300 can't do it they do have an interval video mode but i prefer having an actual stills camera to shoot time lapses with and again i always have to bring a dedicated camera just for that whereas if it were only shooting on the r5c or multiple r5c's then one camera could do everything it could shoot time lapses hyperlapses as well as video and this is also one thing where i was thinking of switching over because for these travel jobs the less gear you have the better so now let's talk about my overall verdict of the canon r5c I like this camera way more than I initially thought. I thought this was just a little upgrade from our R5 because again, we are more video focused. So if you want to have a behind the scenes and a third, fourth angle camera, then it makes more sense to have the R5C opposed to the original R5. But I actually like this camera so much and I think it's so much better than the original R5 that it actually rivaled the C70 in a lot of situations. And again, I was really close to making it my main camera because of its versatility with the RF full frame mount, the capabilities of shooting internal time lapses, it being a little sharper. So if you do some corporate work where you need a lot of cropping in, sometimes the C70 might actually be a little bit too soft. So overall, it's easier to travel with this camera because it's small and lightweight. So it does have a lot of advantages over a Canon C70 or especially a Canon C300 Mark III. But again, the internal ND filter and the lack of battery life are two things that really prevented me from using this camera as a main camera. The internal ND filters is my major big issue and the battery life is also really annoying when using it on a gimbal or in an underwater housing. But overall, I still like this camera a lot. I'm just wondering who this camera is actually for because the video focused person will probably go to the C70 for everything that I have mentioned earlier. And I personally don't understand the complete hybrid shooting as well. 
if you can only afford one camera that needs to be able to shoot stills and video, I think the Canon R5C is the best camera out there right now because it can do everything. But if you're like me and you're running a production company or you're actually a freelancer that does video work first, but sometimes need to take stills, then I would always prefer having one dedicated film camera and one camera that is dedicated for stills. Because again, if you want to be serious about shooting video, in my opinion, you need ND filters, you need a microphone, you need an external monitor to judge your exposure as well as your focus and your frame framing and if you have all that on your camera maybe even a mist filter and a matte box you can't really shoot stills with it anymore anyway so again i would always like to have a dedicated stills camera and a dedicated film camera especially for the price point whereas this camera is the same price as the canon c70 but that depends on you so let me know down in the comments who do you think this r5c is for and why do you need a camera that can do both opposed to getting the canon c70 and since you're already here and you're obviously interested in the r5c then check out these two videos as well one is us vlogging with the camera and comparing it to the canon c70 and the other one is me building our ultimate v-mount rig i hope you liked this video and if you did give it a thumbs up because it really helps the channel grow subscribe for more and i hope to see you on the next one